Hi guys, I'm MJ and welcome to a new episode of Costume Showcase. So this intro might get a little bit messy because I didn't feel like writing a script for it. Because every time I do an intro from a script it just feels unnatural when I try to edit it and I kind of hate them. So I'm just gonna talk to the camera and the cat is trying to get into the room. Right, so this costume showcase is kind of a two for one. That is to say, it is one of my older costumes and I'm still fairly happy with how it came out, except I don't wear it as I intended it anymore. So I'm gonna be going into both of those aspects. My camera's flashing, what's going on? I think my card is full, hang on. All right, where were we? Yes, okay, so this costume showcase, it started out as a Skyrim cosplay, but I don't wear it like that anymore, but I do still wear it. So I'm going to be showing some of the background of making it originally, but then also the things that I did to change it and the way that I'm wearing it now. So you'll also be seeing footage of well, probably photos of me wearing it as a Skyrim outfit and then some live footage of me wearing it the way I do now. So a little background. When Skyrim came out I played it almost non-stop and um, at the time I was sharing an Xbox with my husband. Now we have two for reasons. <laughs> the reasons being that we're now playing Fallout 76 which is online which we want to do both at the same time, which is why we need two Xboxes and two TVs and our living room is not your mama's living room. <laughs> anyway, back to Skyrim. I played mostly mages. I had a couple of different playthroughs and tried different styles, but the mage was just my favorite. I love just slinging around magic. If there's magic in a game, I want to be playing a mage. So I played a mage in Skyrim, um, one who got so good at enchanting that she didn't need to wear armor anymore. And by really good at enchanting, I mean a glitch that exploited the stacking effects of a spell and a potion over and over and over and over again to make your gear absolutely overpowered. But shh. Anyway, my girl was not wearing any armor, she could just wear whatever outfit she liked because I could enchant it to give her all the damage reduction she needed. Anyway, the outfit that I liked the most in the game was this one, which was labeled in the game as a merchant's outfit. Not many NPCs wore it and the ones that did were indeed merchants. Anyway, I thought it was cool and so I wore it all the time and when I started making my own costumes I quickly decided that I wanted to make that outfit from the game and wear it as a cosplay. So Skyrim being a fantasy game but particularly influenced by Nordic cultures, it has some, shall we say, faux viking vibes. If you look at the picture, it has that apron thing going on that you see in a lot of viking materials, but with a corset belt over the top, which, you know, it looks cool, but it's, it's not really a viking thing. Uh, and then also it doesn't have the brooches and the chains that you see a lot in viking stuff, so I guess they just drew their inspiration and went from there. It's a fantasy game, so you know, that's fine. Anyway, to make it I had to find some fabrics and luckily I happened upon a bedsheet that was more or less the right color. In the game it seemed to be a bit bluish but also kind of purple depending on the light. So this purple fabric was good enough for me. I wasn't going for full screen accuracy. I tend to like to give my own interpretations to a cosplay. She said as though she has many cosplay, like this is one of two. <laughs> so I had my purple fabric for the dress and I had a black bedsheet for the apron. I sourced some ribbon at a local craft store, sewing supplies store. And also fun fact, by the time I was done with this dress they had sold out of it and they weren't making any more so I just had just enough 
to finish it off. For the corset belt I went to the weekly fabric market and I just got some remnants of leather from the leather stall. I didn't really need a giant piece because it's just a belt and it barely has any shaping in the game so I wasn't gonna go full corset with multiple layers and boning and eyelets. It looked very basic and almost like it wouldn't work as a corset at all. It's just a belt made out of different pieces that are laced together. The leather that I got was quite thin and because it was a remnant it was quite cheap and after wearing it a couple of times you started to notice that. So I don't have any live footage of this outfit that includes the belt because I, I tried to look for it while I was preparing for this video. I couldn't find it anywhere so I think I just threw it out. So as to construction, I might just do a couple of close-ups as well showing off the construction in bits and pieces but here's the general breakdown. I used a medieval construction on this dress, very basic squares and triangles. That's all it was really. It's a cool way to construct a garment, you just need rectangles and triangles and you get a dress out of it and it's, it's pretty magical really. A big long rectangle for the front, the same for the back, same for the arms because it's in the armpits and of course in the back and the front and the side seams. This fabric being a thrifted sheet I also didn't have a lot of it. I didn't have the abundance to make the skirt very big and it didn't look very big in the game. It looked like a very modest skirt so the way that I'm wearing it now I would kind of like the skirt to be bigger because I do like me some twirly skirts but it is what it is and for the cosplay version it looks pretty much like it does in the game volume wise. For the seams I used mostly felt seams which was also a medieval technique that I had used in an earlier dress at that point. With this construction type you do get a very straight torso. That is just what happens. You can of course take in the side seams and I think they did use to do that start out with the rectangles and then shape the side seams as required. Even at that time I figured I could use it as a separate dress. So I created some long darts. I did two of those on the front and two of those on the back and I sandwiched D-rings in between. This would allow me to lace a cord through those D-rings and tighten it. Of course whenever I wore it as the Skyrim outfit I didn't really do that. Uh, because the corset belt already cinched in the waist. For the apron I took a look at the pictures in the game to estimate the proportions. It had straps going over the shoulders and then just a rectangle starting from about above the bust to about the knees and I just tried to proportionally <laughs> draft a shape that would work. And to attach the front to the back I just made some strips of fabric, folded them in half, sewed them together lengthwise, then turned them inside out and then you have a neatly finished strap with all the seams contained. Okay, <laughs> I hit the maximum record time on my camera so I had to restart. Anyway, for the belt that was also part of this costume I just basically bought one at one of the events that I go to every year. There's always stalls with a lot of cool belts and I found one that would work with this costume and could be tucked into itself and wear it like that. In the game there's also a couple of pouches hanging from the belt, mostly in the back and over time I collected some just basic generic fantasy belts. Um, I switched out which ones I used every now and then and at some point I also made a couple of very cute stamina, health and uh, mana bottles that I could hang onto the belt. I don't think the model in the game has those on it, just a pouch, but I thought it fit the character that I was playing as a mage. Now the last thing I made for this cosplay version is a under tunic. The thing is, the events that I was going to wear this at mostly happen in early spring, like April. And here in the Netherlands we have a saying, um, April doet wat hij wil, uh, which basically means April does whatever it wants and if you were trying to make plans it could range from freezing and snow to being super hot and sunny. The year that I made this outfit it was predicted to be colder and in order to wear this outfit and not freeze to death 
I decided to make a long sleeve under tunic. It isn't in the game, they just wear it with the short sleeves and nothing underneath, which... One, throughout history people wear underwear and fantasy games and media always skip this. I get it, it's an extra thing you don't have to make or model and a lot of outfits people think look cooler if there's no underwear. Personally, I disagree. Especially for movies, the shift is just also for the actress's or actor's comfort because you don't have the outer layers anyway. I'm, I'm getting way off track here. The point is the game didn't have any shift showing, but I wanted to wear one for my own comfort, for an extra layer, for cold, and also to um, hide the thermic underwear under if it got really, really, really cold. I wore this outfit in freezing weather. And being able to hide a long sleeve thermic shirt underneath the shift was just moving on. I did make the shift roughly in the same way as the dress, just rectangles and gores and I made a quite narrow keyhole neckline again because I wanted to be able to hide thermic underwear underneath if necessary and Viking outfits used a lot of keyhole necklines anyway so I went with that and put a little bit of cute embroidery around the neckline because I thought that the shift was looking a little bit plain um, I added the same embroidery around the cuffs just to have a little bit of a visual interest So I wore it like this like once or twice and the more I was getting into historical costuming I quickly realized that cosplay itself did not fully hold my interest. I liked the historically inspired part of it mostly, not just recreating an outfit from a game or a movie. I wanted to have my own design in it, either based on a piece of media or on a historical garment. So as my skills were evolving with this and my knowledge as well, I realized that I wanted to update the outfit. If you do something Viking, there's got to be those chains, especially if you use that apron style. So what I did was I went to the thrift store and I just bought a whole bunch of necklaces that I liked parts of that I thought I could combine and then I just threw everything together and ended up with a bunch of different chains in different lengths that I could hang between the two straps. I didn't have reproduction brooches and I didn't want to because those are very 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 expensive so I just went with giant buttons and uh, I actually did not attach these permanently to the apron because I was kind of considering still wearing it as the purely Skyrim version, except that I never did, but never mind. So I just attached those buttons with safety pins to the apron and hung the chain between them. Of course, I did end up liking that version better than the purely Skyrim one. So in the end, if I wore it like the Skyrim outfit, I would include the chains. In the end, I didn't really wear it like that all that often. I think a couple of events and um, the photo shoot that these pictures are from. Anyway, that about covers the Skyrim version of this outfit. So let's move on to how I'm wearing it now. More or less my favorite part of this outfit was the base dress, the purple dress. As I mentioned, the corset belt started to wear out pretty quickly, so I stopped wearing that but the apron doesn't really work if there's nothing to attach it. Otherwise it just sits on your shoulders and it flops in the wind, it shifts around. You need to attach it somehow. So I also tried a version where I put eyelets, no not eyelets, I put D-rings on the sides of the apron and laced the front and the back together that way. I think I only wore that version once. It kind of interfered with the lacing that was on the base dress as well. It kind of worked, it looked nice-ish, but I didn't like it enough to wear it more than once like that. The apron is still in my closet, I still have it, but I haven't worn it in years. Around that time, I also wanted to have a more generic medieval outfit, and I also got very inspired by a type of medieval dress called the Gates of Hell dress and I wanted to make one 
but since it's just a big thing that you throw over an existing dress, I didn't need to have a under dress. I didn't feel like making one, so instead I figured I would repurpose the purple Skyrim dress as just a generic medieval type dress. Of course, the Skyrim outfit had short sleeves around like three quarter sleeves and most medieval dresses had full length sleeves but I did have a little bit of fabric and ribbon left. Uh, actually if you look closely there's two different types of ribbon in there that look similar but not quite exactly the same. From a distance you can't really tell, it's fine. So I made some detachable under sleeves that closed up with buttons and loops and they attached to the base dress with snaps. I wore this dress with the Gates of Hell overdress a couple of times and really did like wearing it like that so much so that I think that was the point that I really decided that I wouldn't want to wear it as a Skyrim dress anymore. Wait, am I reaching the limit again? And we're back. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, the Gates of Hell dress was big and voluminous and kind of made for standing around and looking pretty and wasn't all that practical walking around a festival field or dancing. As I was going to more and more events, I started to realize that while I did really like going to festivals for multiple days, wearing the fancy special outfit for both days was just a little bit much. So I decided that for the second days I would prefer to be a little bit more chill. So that's when I started to wear the purple dress as my second day comfortable outfit. I could wear it with long sleeves or the short sleeves. I also wore it a couple of times with a white blouse underneath that would show a little bit below the short sleeves of the dress and put up a belt over top where I could carry my pouches and all of my essentials and you know that just made it a very kind of basic but comfortable and complete outfit for the second day of events. Now since I made this outfit like years ago my body has changed in the meantime so I wanted to alter the way that the dress laces up. The way I did that was just basically retailer the darts that I put in that hold the D-rings. I wanted to shorten them a little bit. They went down too far and if I laced it up all the way then it was too tight across my hips and my belly and I realized that where it really needed the cinch was just at my waist and from the waist down it should just flow freely. So I just pulled out the old stitches and pulled out the old D-rings, drew out um, the new shape of the darts, re-sewed it. There's a little bit of scarring left on the fabric because those seams were in there for years. There's some discoloration as well because those darts were enclosed and didn't see any sunlight. But to be honest, I think that just makes this dress more lived in. And you know, it's a garment that I love wearing and that I wear a lot and that has changed with me over the years. And I think it's perfectly fine that it shows that. This outfit started out as a Skyrim cosplay and I did have fun wearing it like that. But if I'm completely honest, I do think I love it more the way that it is now. A cute, very comfortable medieval type dress that I can dress up or down as I want to. And it's a great dress to dance in. It's comfortable, it twirls fine it doesn't have huge skirts which are best for twirling but it you know it's still a fun dress to dance in and twirl and jump around and have all together have a good time okay i think that's it for this video um this costume showcase was a little bit more elaborate than the first one um, or even than the other ones are going to be just because this costume evolved so much over the years and I wanted to show the whole of it and not just how I made it then, but also what it became. I hope you enjoyed this costume showcase. I don't know which one is going to be my next costume, but I guess that keeps things interesting. So whenever my next showcase is going to be, I hope to see you then. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!
Uh oh. What? People. <gasps> oh no, people. Ish.